Hello everyone and welcome to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. I'm coming to you from my home in the Pacific Northwest. I live in the greater Seattle region of Washington State. It is December 22nd, which is the winter solstice. And I thought I would do a special winter episode, like a winter planning episode. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit inspired by other YouTubers out there who are making videos about inspiration per season, uh, listing patterns that fit certain style trends uh, and things like that. I'm not a person who's tapped into what's in style and on trend, so I'm not going to make one of those videos. I love watching them though. This instead is going to be about what I'd like to make this winter and things that I think I can commit to, maybe actually accomplish the goal. I don't know, let's try it out. So before I dive into my knit list for winter, uh, a couple of things first. Uh, I noticed that this month the channel has reached a thousand subscribers and that is a huge deal. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for subscribing to the channel and watching my videos, leaving comments, sending me messages. Um, it's been really nice to connect with you and be a part of this community, sharing my perspective and hearing lots of ideas from you all. So if you've commented, messaged, liked a video, subscribed to the channel, uh, just a huge thank you to you all. It's, it's been amazing and I'm looking forward to keeping all of that going. The second thing is that um, I had big plans for the holidays. Uh, it's right around Christmas and uh, my husband and I uh, made plans to visit family in Texas. Like I said, I live here in Washington and uh, there are two time zones away uh, in the south, we're in the north. It's a great distance. We drove all the way there spent a few days with family and got sick so we're back home early yeah so i'm going to try to keep this episode on the short side because the more that i talk the more that my throat dries out and when it dries out completely it will hurt to talk so I'm going to take a sip of my tea and try to pace myself. Um, but for the most part, um, I'm feeling okay. I'm definitely sick, but it's not like completely wiped out sick. I'm tired. My throat hurts. I get headaches. My appetite is being affected. I'm definitely sick. Um, my husband seems to have more symptoms than I do, so we're both kind of just taking it easy while we're on winter break from work. Hopefully we're better before we have to go back to work teaching again. So what I've put together is something I'm calling a knit list. Yeah, a knit list. <laughs> and I like that it rhymes with a different kind of list. Um, so it's a good list, not a bad list, but uh, I thought it would be fun to try out making a list of things to make each season. Um, I've been inspired by uh, Knee Knits, who uh, has made a lot of videos about um, inspiration of what to make each season, and uh, it's just been really uh, motivational. I've also been inspired by Yarn and Yarns, who does the 12 cast ons for the year. Uh, I'm not ready to plan for a whole year of making, uh, but I figure 
kind of combining these ideas into seasonal, uh, you know, I want to make these things this season and just kind of see how that goes. So today's episode is going to be about the five things that I want to make for the winter season. These are all going to be new projects that I haven't started yet, but I would like to. Uh, they're things that I think I can make uh, during the, what is it, three months for winter. So we shall see. So first up on my list, and there's no particular order to these things, uh, I kind of wrote them down in the order that I thought of them. Uh, but first up on my list is the Cosmopolitan Sweater by Anna Maria. And this is actually a crochet pattern, uh, which will be fun to do. It calls for DK weight yarn, somewhere between 1,700 and 3,100 yards, depending on the size. Uh, the crochet hook size is six millimeter or a J hook. Now I've actually lost slash given away a number of my crochet hooks over the years. So I actually need to order more or take a trip to the craft store, but that's very dangerous. So, <laughs> um, I need to get some more hooks because I, I know I have a J hook, but I don't have the nearby sizes and I'm going to need to check uh, that I'm getting gauge. So I'm just going to go ahead and get more crochet hooks and uh, be able to do that. The sweater is a bat wing style and I've already purchased this pattern. So that's part of the reason why this pattern came to mind first is that I've already purchased the pattern and I've already purchased the yarn. So uh, I bought, I think, two, two of these. It's called Mega Ball, and I ordered it from Hobby, H-O-B-B-I-I. -I. Uh, each ball has a little over 1,300 yards, and it's this beautiful blue. It's like cerulean which was my favorite crayon color out of the Crayola crayon box. <laughs> uh, and I just thought it would make a really nice, striking, bright blue bat wing sweater. I really wanted to go for a green color, but I just couldn't find the shade of green that I was envisioning. I couldn't find it. So I settled for this beautiful blue color. But um, I have the pattern, I have the yarn, I need to go get more crochet hooks so I can make a gauge swatch and then I'll be able to get started. I'm really excited about this pattern. The sweater looks extremely comfortable. I've already taken a look at the instructions and there's advice in there about having a more drapey fabric. Um, I read this a while ago, so the details elude me a little bit, but uh, kind of something to do with modifying the gauge a little bit to um, get a more drapey fabric. So we'll see what I can accomplish with my own personal yarn tensioning and things. Um, but I think that sounds great. Because of the bat wing style to the pattern. The advice given is that this should be worn with five and a half inches of positive ease at the hips. So usually um, positive ease is measured more in like the chest area, but because of the bat wings already um, adding so much extra space there, um, the ease is going to be measured at the hips instead. So the advice given is to <clears throat> measure your hips, uh, add five and a half inches to that measurement, and then find the pattern, uh, the size that most closely matches that. 
Uh, and so I'm going to try to follow that as advice as best as I can. The only downside to this pattern that I see at this point, and it's only a downside because of me, it's nothing to do with the design or the style or anything, but the construction is bottom up and it's seamed. I've had bad luck with getting correct sizing with bottom up garments. I actually have a bottom up garment on the needles right now and I'm like dreading the moment when I seam it all together for fear that I will have created yet another too large bottom up piece. Uh, and the, the bat wings are already going to add a lot to the sweater. I don't need it to also be really long or else it's going to look like it's swallowing me. So I'm worried about that. But it's crochet, it's a little different, hopefully everything will be fine. So that's the only point that has me a little worried is that it is a bottom-up construction. The second thing on my knit list for winter is the Driftwood by Isabel Kramer, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. In fact, I remember trying to knit this before when I was in graduate school. It did not go well. <laughs> uh, I didn't really know about gauge swatching back then. I just would get the yarn, the needles, and just go. And I do remember getting pretty far in the sweater and it was way too big. <laughs> and I just said, I don't have time for this. I'm in graduate school and I had too much studying to do anyway. And I never really went back to it. Well, I was scrolling through Ravelry and I found this really awesome project photo from someone out there and oh, it drew me back in to the driftwood. So this is on my knit list for winter. Uh, the pattern is written for worsted weight yarn between a thousand and fifteen hundred yards. I can certainly accommodate that with my stash. Uh, the it's a knitting pattern uh, calls for US size six four millimeter needles as well as US size seven four and a half millimeter needles. I have those. And the pattern is written to have one to two inches of positive ease. Now that's going to be measured around the chest area. Uh, so it's not going to be super oversized. So I like the idea of the kind of oversized comfy bat wing cosmopolitan sweater, but then also sort of a more fitted sweater with the driftwood. Um, the driftwood is knit top down seamless, which is my preferred method because I can try it on as I go from the top. Uh, because I, with the bottom up sweaters, the thing I struggle with the most is that the fabric stretches out the more you add to it. And I haven't figured out how to predict that stretch. So I think it's gonna be fine and then I wash it and block it and now all of a sudden it's two to five inches longer and I didn't want it to be that long. So the driftwood being knit top down has, has me feeling at ease. I know about gauge swatching now. I'm confident that I can successfully create this garment. Uh, in the designer's photographs, um, she's got gray and blue stripes, if I remember correctly, and they're evenly spaced. Um, but the project photo that I found uses this really light gray as the main color, which almost looks white, and switches up the striping to have thin and thick stripes, but not throughout the whole garment. and just really love it. So I want to mimic that in my version as well. I think maybe instead of a light gray, I might go ahead with white. 
I don't have a lot of white tops in my wardrobe for a couple of reasons. One, I drink a lot of coffee and eat messy foods and white is going to show all of those stains. Two, why is it so difficult to purchase a white top that you can't see through, right? Um, so with this being a sweater I'd wear over a, a t-shirt or a camisole or something, um, I wouldn't worry about it being see-through. So I think I could get away with white and then make the stripes, um, I don't know, gray, black. I don't want to go navy blue because I don't want it to be like sailor. I don't want it to read sailor, right? Like I'm on a boat. I'm still working on the colors, but I'm very excited uh, about the driftwood. The third thing on my list is a V-neck cardigan. So I was searching through the patterns for a cardigan, and then I was really drawn to the V-necks as opposed to the rounded necks. And I found a pattern that really appeals to me. I haven't purchased it yet, but I'm probably going to. It's called the Cappuccino Cardigan by Knits by Summer. I can't tell if it's a top-down or bottom-up construction, but I'm assuming it's top-down because in the pattern description it talks about decreasing for the sleeves, which indicates this direction of knitting. So I'm pretty, I'm confident it's top-down, but not extremely confident as you can tell. Uh, so it's written to hold a lace weight with a worsted to make overall a worsted weight yarn. I'm planning to skip that and just use a worsted weight yarn. <laughs> uh, it's going to use somewhere between 1,094 and 1,837 yards. Uh, US 8 five millimeter needle as well as a US 6 a four millimeter needle. I'm assuming the change in the needles will be for the ribbing. And it's recommended to knit it somewhere between 25 and 30 centimeters of positive ease. And I like that the designer actually put in the description notes some clarification on the positive ease. So they're saying if you want it to be more oversized, go with the 30 centimeters. But if you want it to be more fitted, go with the um, 25 centimeters. Kind of, there was some advice in there and I appreciated that. Um, it's still a lot of positive ease though. I mean, 10 centimeters is about four inches. So, it's still a pretty oversized, you know, a roomy cardigan, um, but I like how in the photographs it looks very easy to style for a casual look or a more um, a professional look to wear to work. And having a piece like that in my wardrobe would be really great. Um, I'm really enjoying uh, spinning yarn and knitting with it. And one of the projects I recently finished was a pair of hand spun socks. They turned out so well. Um, I'm really proud of how far I've come with my spinning and how much I've learned and how to... Uh, get the yarn that I want out of the fiber. I'm, I still mess up and I still don't know everything, but I've learned a lot so far and I'm just really happy. So uh, what I'd like to do is create a snow inspired hand spun pair of socks. Uh, so I just finished a, a blue, I call it my blue Christmas, hand spun socks. Uh, they're for my husband. 
Uh, but I used shades of blue and some tan and um, created this self-striping yarn. And I really enjoyed the, the process of spinning as well as uh, knitting up the socks. It was just a wonderful experience. So I'd like to do that again, uh, but differently, not the exact same thing. So I wrote down, make some snow inspired hand spun socks. Uh, and the fiber that I'm using is actually yarn that I bought from Joann's. It's K and C cozy yarn, which is this barely spun. It's pretty much roving, right? So I bought it to use as roving to spin into thinner yarn. Um, this yarn is 50% superwash wool, 45% premium acrylic, and 5% viscose. So it's a good combination for socks, uh, the wool being superwash, but also having that um, acrylic in there is going to hold up to some wear and tear. So um, I would like to create some of those. The colors, the style, the pattern I use for the sock, I haven't really picked that out. Snow inspired, I want some white in there. That's basically all I figured out so far. So that's a project that I'm leaving a little bit open to um, for me to figure out the details later, uh, but I've got it on my, on my knit list. So I've got a crochet project. I've got a knit project. I've got patterns I've already purchased and patterns I haven't purchased yet. I've got some hand spun. <laughs> well, my list wouldn't be complete. Number five, I want to make the Snow Matter What Gnome Mystery Knit Along uh, by Sarah Shira, who's Imagine Landscapes. I have participated in her gnome mystery knit along for Christmas three years in a row. Um, she does mystery knit alongs throughout the year as well, but I've made it kind of a tradition to do the one in December, which basically is, is like an advent calendar leading up to Christmas. This year I did not purchase it because I was planning that trip to go see family and with the drive and spending time with people, I just, the gnome knitting would have just been a distraction and I would have felt a little bit of stress about getting behind on the clues. And I just thought, you know what? This year I'll do it after the season is over and it won't be a mystery to me. <laughs> Uh, I'll know what it looks like and I'll pick the colors out. So I had kind of already decided that's how I was going to approach it this year. So I'm not sad about it. Um, but yes, that is definitely number five on my knit list for winter is the Snow Matter What Gnome. Uh, these patterns call for uh, fingering weight yarn. And she has the needle sizes listed as US 1, which is 2.25 millimeters, and a US 1 and a half, which is 2.5 millimeters. Um, and that's all the information that I found on the Ravelry page. Uh, I'm going to purchase the pattern um, after Christmas, and then I will cast it on sometime in winter uh, to work on. The winter season does run December 22nd to March 18th. Yeah, March 18th. Um, which is about three months. Should be plenty of time to get these five projects done. I also have other projects, you know, on the needles that I'm working on now that I want to finish as well. But uh, the focus of this knit list is what's something new I want to cast on with the idea of winter in mind? Um, what am I feeling inspired by right now that I would like to work on in the next three months? And so those are my five items on my knit list for winter 2024. Okay, everyone, I am going to sign off. <clears throat>
Yep, I keep feeling that tickle in my throat. <laughs> uh, but I hope that uh, you're staying safe, you're staying well, and that you enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, uh, Happy Festivus, <laughs> all the holidays. Uh, I don't know if I'll see you before the new year, so if I don't, also Happy New Year. Uh, take care, and I'll see you on the other side in 2024. Bye!